Hey guys, so we've got confirmation that Spear is going to be released and it's coming for us on the 5th of December, so next week. I just wanted to cover off a couple of things that you can do to get ready for this or a couple of things that you might want to be aware of um, as we're going into that reset. So first and foremost, obviously Spears aren't available on the auction house at the moment. We don't know where they're going to drop from, but it's a safe bet that it will drop from one star dungeons, not two star. It makes no sense to be put into a two star dungeon. So one of the main things that I'm going to make sure is that on the night of the reset, these dimensional contract token ones are set at 3,600, so that once the reset happens and the game gets patched, I've got 4,500, so that I can run these dungeons. The other thing that I'm going to be doing as well is hopefully getting some dimensional shards over the next couple of days, but I've already been saving these anyway to make trade on lock stones. Saving these to just craft the dimensional, two dimensional that you're going to need to make a spear is just a safe bet that you can pick up your spear straight away. Now, I don't think that the world boss tables are going to be, or the boxes from world bosses are going to be updated with the spear in them from whichever world boss they drop from. But ultimately, if you do get any of those boxes, it's going to be worth holding onto them until the reset rather than opening them now, just in case. Now, even if you're not planning on playing spear, it's worth knowing that having the dimensional uh, tokens or the actual dimensional um, seals that you need to craft them is going to be worthwhile because the traits are going to sell for a decent amount of lucent. Lots of people are going to be re-rolling to spear. Lots of people are going to need the trait unlocks on them. Everybody wants to max that as soon as they can and do as much damage as they can as quickly as they can. So making sure that you're in a position to capitalize on that is going to really benefit you. The other thing to be aware of is your contracts. Um, so I run all of my contracts from Watcher's Post, but ultimately what you want to be aiming to do is stockpile as much parchment as you can. This is a no-brainer, but there's also another way that you can take this a little bit further if you want to be sweaty, and that is through farming these green scrolls. Um, so these green scrolls, if we click on this, you can refresh them, and they will also have a chance when you go for your refresh to give you parchment. So this is going to be worthwhile doing. Now to get the best kind of results from that, if you farm in ruins, um, all of these mobs are going to drop them. It's not just the uh, elites or anything like that, they all have a chance to drop them. It's the same for Pure Light Tower and it's the same for Great Claw Forest. So farm in these places to grab those scrolls, to make sure that you have as much parchment as possible, ready to craft your skills. Now, the other option is obviously skill conversion books. If you've got skill conversion books, then you're not going to have a problem if you're making a hard switch to it. But if you're unsure on whether you want to play the weapon or not, farming parchment's going to be the way forward for you. If you don't have skill conversion, but you do have your battle pass maxed out, you can pick them up from here. It's 10 in total that you can get, I believe. Yep, so it's 2,500 points that you'll need for this. And while we're in here, this is another place where you want to make sure that you're picking up your contracts um, and also your tokens for your dungeons and things. As I said in previous videos, I was holding on to buying these anyway until the end of the battle pass for two star dungeons, um, or when there was potential that it would be uh, two star dungeons using the same token like it was in Korea. But the other thing that you're going to want to pick up in here is the mastery books, and this is going to take us on to the next thing that you're going to want to do because ultimately you're going to want to get your mastery up as soon as possible. So those mastery books that you can get um, that give an extra 30% mastery also stack with the apple pie from here so the golden apple pie so you want to make sure that you can craft some of this or you have some of this available it's going to give you a, a combined 80% mastery bonus so you want to make sure that you have that available and also I'll be doing the same where I'll have 20,000 abyss points ready to go and I'll be able to, to go and farm that up um, to make that a little bit less of a chore, I've also kept a lot of my scrolls ready, including Tadel's Tower. Now, I'd been holding on to these anyway in anticipation of Spear coming, but ADS being ADS have only given us a week's notice, so it's not going to be as effective as it was. But ultimately, I'm going to have nine of these scrolls. I'm going to be able to go and run Tadel's Tales Tower and then throw all of that mastery into my Spear as well. The last thing that I want to kind of touch on for this is the battle pass itself. Now the battle pass will reset on the day of the patch. I'm highly expecting that we'll get a similar battle pass to what we had in Korea, where there will be a weapon selection chest in here for a one star weapon chest. 
If that is the case, then obviously everybody's going to have access to a spear. Um, it should inflate, or oh, sorry, it should, yeah, inflate the amount of supply on the auction house, which will probably bring down trade costs initially. But ultimately, I think that there's still going to be loose to be made in this patch if you're able to get your hands on um, some spears with decent traits and you're able to sell them. The last thing that I would recommend, again, because of the fact that it's going to be a pain to trade these, is if you're in a position to do so. So say you've been holding on to your seals and you're going to stockpile your points and everything. Be mindful that you can just craft trait unlock stones. You can also use your tier two or your two star, sorry, dungeon tokens to craft trait stone bundles and then use them to get your trait unlock stones. If you can get a weapon with a decent trait or you can use your conversion stones to turn the first trait into one that you want, you can then just use 200 trait stones to unlock that la the last two traits. And then the final, final thing that I wanted to talk about is have a look at what you're going to need in terms of weapon traits. So we already know that it, it's you're going to need heavy attack. Everybody's going to run heavy attack, so picking up a couple of weapons while they're cheap with heavy attack on. I'm not saying these are going to skyrocket in price because they're not, but ultimately you never know what the supply is going to be like and what the demand is going to be like. I think it's a pretty safe bet that we're probably going to be looking at, at hit and heavy as 100%. And then I have a crit attack speed or maybe cooldown, depending on what the weapons come with. Anyway, it was just a really quick video. I just wanted to cover off some of the things that I'm going to be doing to get ready for Spear. I am going to do another video as well with regards to how I feel about the potential for Wand and Spear. It will be an interesting one. Um, I do think that there's some genuine viability there. And I think that it's going to be an interesting one to see how we can sleep on with Spear. So I'll look at some of the skills and look at some of the the details of spear and how I think that's going to work with the the wand. Um, ultimately, I think everybody's going to try some variation of spear in their favorite main hand anyway. So it will be interesting to see what happens. If you got any questions or you got any comments that you want to leave on how else people can prepare for spear being launched, then drop it in the comment section, and I'll catch you in the next one.